Hi guys, welcome to an Android Kotlin tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building out a to-do application with Android. I know a bunch of you guys just rolled your eyes because we're building yet another to-do application on this channel. However, before you decide to exit this video, let me just mention that we will be implementing this application in a fully functional and reactive way without the use of the ReactiveX libraries. Also, to-do applications are good examples to cover because they force the user to implement a CRUD style of architecture for the data in the application. This tutorial will be split into two parts because I do not want to to overload you guys with a bunch of different ideas, so keep that in mind as we go ahead. We will be making use of two of the Android lifecycle component libraries, namely the Live Data library and the View Model library. Live Data is an observable data holder class. Basically, Live Data follows what's called the observer pattern. This is a pattern where when an object is updated, the rest that depend on that object are also updated. In essence, objects watch each other's state through subscription and then change accordingly. The View Model Library is a class that manages the data that is viewed by the activity. Basically, it allows us to communicate with the data layer and it calls the business logic of our application based on the life cycle of the application. It also maintains the data and keeps it alive as long as it's needed. We will also make use of the Anko Commons Library. This is basically just a utility library that was created by JetBrains to add a bunch of helper functions into Android for the Kotlin programming language. All right, so to create our application, we want to give our application a name and then we want to check the box that says include Kotlin support. Then I'm going to select API 22. You can select whatever you want. And we want an empty activity inside of this. And we're just going to leave all of this as it is. Once your application has finished building, you will see obviously the main activity open up as well as the main activity res open up. We just want to close these real quick because we want to make changes to our build.gradle files. So you'll notice that you have two build.gradle files inside of your application. One is for the top level of the application and that's this one. And then the other one is for the actual module of the application. Inside of our top level Gradle build file, we are going to add two lines of code. So just extension variables. One will be called arch version. And this will be the version number for our lifecycle component libraries. And then the other one will be called Onco version. And this will be for the Onco library. Then we want to go into our build.gradle file here with all of our dependencies and stuff. And we want to add our dependencies. First, we want to add com.android.support design. And the version number of this will correspond with the com.android.support app compat library that already is inside of your application. So mine, for instance, is 26.1.0. This 26 is the SDK version. So if you're on like version 27 or version 28, this will say 28.1.0 and so on and so forth. And also just a real quick, very useful way of figuring out the latest version. If you input the incorrect version and you just hover over it, you'll see here that it will say that there's a newer version of this library and it will give you the version number. And you can use this feature to your advantage to find out the version numbers for the libraries that you want to import. Next, we want to bring in our view model and live data dependencies. So these are android.arch.lifecycle extensions. And then we add our arch version and then we want the compiler which is android.arch.lifecycle compiler and for the compiler we're going to use this annotation processor rather than this implementation function and we're simply doing that because the compiler is a different type of library than the lifecycle extensions library next we want to bring in onco so this is just org.jetbrains.onco onco commons and then we put in the onco version variable that we made in the other file and these are all the libraries that we're going to need for this project so now we want to click this sync now button and this will get all of the dependencies and check to see if the version numbers are proper and all that stuff. You can see that uh, we failed to resolve Onco Commons 9.3. And this is because the latest version is actually 10.4, not 9.3. So if we put in that version number here, take it out, and then put it into our extension variable, then we can re-put in our Onco version and we can try resyncing this. And now Gradle has built properly, so we know that everything is working as it should. 
We want to create a package called model, and this will be the package that will have all of our various data files and classes and stuff inside of it. We'll start with a file called to do, and this will just be a data class. And we just want to shape this piece of data so that it will be the backbone for how our to do should look. Our to do will have a value of text, which will be a string, and then we'll have an ID, which will be a long, and we'll have the status, which will be a Boolean, and we'll set that to false by default. So we want the user to be able to put in the to do body in a text box, and then we'll generate an ID for each to do. And then the status will be whether or not the to do has been completed. And then we can use that to remove the to do's as well. We want to create another file called to do model, and this will have the actual model for our application. So we'll have a value called to do's, which will be a list of our to do type. This will have all of the to do's inside of it. And then we'll have a value called visibility, which will have our visibility type inside of it. Now, of course, this will throw an error because we haven't created the visibility. So now we want to create a file called visibility.kt. Inside of this, we're going to have two sealed classes. One of them will be called action and the other one will be called visibility. Action will have nothing inside of it, but our visibility class will have three different classes inside of it. So with our visibility sealed class, we want to have a class called all a class called active and a class called completed and we'll have all of these extend our visibility class and we're going to be using these so that we can filter through our to do's if we have a bunch of to do's that are completed and we just want to see those completed to do's we'll be able to select the completed visibility type and then this will allow us to see those to do's now i know some of you may be asking why do we not use an enum for this and that's because we're going to be using a very reactive functional way of building this application now we want to extend our action sealed class with a bunch of different actions that we can take. So we'll create a counter here. This will be the counter that will increment our IDs for our to do's. So as we add in to do's, they'll start at zero and they'll go up. Data class add to do will have a text, an ID, and the ID will be by default our counter incremented. And then we'll extend action with this. We want to add a few more actions and you got to keep in mind that these will be the actions that the user will be able to take inside of our application. The user can add a to do, the user can toggle a to do, and to toggle a to do all we need access to is just the ID. We can set the visibility of a to do and this will only need to augment the visibility variable and then we can remove a to do. And all we need for this is the ID as well. Now we want to create what's called our store layer. And our store layer is basically the layer between the actual activity and the data. First file for this package that we want to create is going to be called store, which will be an interface. The first method that we want to give to this interface will be our dispatch method. This is a method that will allow us to apply our actions. So this is a method that will allow us to apply the actions that we created to our data store in a purely functional manner. So when we dispatch, we're going to say, okay, dispatch this action and then do this. We want to create another function inside of our interface called subscribe. And this will allow our activities to subscribe to our live data and it will also allow us to transform our live data in various different manners. We're passing in what's called a renderer, and this of course is something that we haven't created yet, and our renderer has a generic type inside of it of T. Then we have a function that we're passing through, and this is the function that we wanna edit our data with. For instance, if we want to just get the completed to-dos, then we can filter our data using a map function or using a filter function so that we only get specific to-dos that are based on the visibility. Now let's build out the renderer. This will be another interface inside of our store package. And again, we want to give this a generic type of T so that we can apply it to any of the types inside of our data. Data. And our render function will just pass in the model, which will come from our live data. And then we'll pass in the generic type. So this is the only function that we need to implement. And this allows us to render a UI that we need for our model. All right, so now let's implement basically the largest part of our application, and that's the to-do store. This will be a class inside of the store package. And we'll have this extend our store 
with to do model being passed into it as well as the view model which comes from the android lifecycle library and you'll see immediately that our class gets an error and we can alt enter on the class and we can click implement these members and it'll say that we want to implement this dispatch and subscribe function so we select both of them and then we hit ok and it will then create two overrides for us before we get to implementing these functions though we want to add a few properties to this class the two properties that we want to create are our state and then our initial state. Our state is a mutable live data of to do model, and we want to set this equal to mutable live data. And then we want to initialize our state by calling to do model, and we're going to pass in a list of, so just an empty list, and then we'll set our visibility by default to visibility.all. Our dispatch function will just assign to state value reduce, which is a function that we'll create here, with the state value inside of it, and then the action that we want to actually implement on our state. So this will allow us to basically change our state based on the action that we want to take. So for instance, if we want to add a to-do, then we just pass in the action of add to-do, and then we pass in the to-do that we want to add, and this allows us to modify the state this way. We'll create our reduce function. This will just be a private function. It will take in the state, which will be a to-do model that is potentially nullable. It'll take in the action, which will of course be an action type, and then we'll output our to-do model. First, we'll set up our new state. So this is going to be the state that we're going to be passing back. So we're going to use the Elvis operator, assign it to either state, and if state is null, then assign it to initial state. We're going to return a when block, and this when block will allow us to go through each one of our actions and do something based on that action. One of the nice features of Android Studio is that we can click Alt Enter on our when block like this, and then we can click Add Remaining Branches, and this will automatically add all of the branches that assign to this when block. For our add to do action we call on new state and then we want to copy specifically the to do's field from our new state so we call new state dot to do's and we set that equal to to do's and then we convert it into a mutable list and then we're going to use this apply function to allow us to apply our action to our mutable list basically we're just going to call this add function and then we're going to create a new to do by inputting the action dot text and then our action dot id so for instance, when we add a to do, we're going to call the action add to do, and then the action add to do has inside of it the to do itself, which has a to do dot text and to do dot ID. So we can just take that out of our action and then put it into our new mutable list and then send that back as our to do's. All right, so now let's implement our toggle to do's action. And for this, we need access to our to do's list. So we call new state to do's, and this time we're going to call the map function on our list of data. We'll have an if check. This will allow us to check to see if the ID of the action that's being passed into here is equal to one of our elements. So basically we're iterating through our list of elements and we're iterating through each of the IDs. And then we just want to invert the to do that we've selected status. So if the status is true, then we'll invert it to false and vice versa. So we just say it dot copy and then we look for the status and we set it equal to the negation of its status. If we don't find an action that gives us back the ID that we're looking for, then we just want to pass back it. And what we can do is we can cast this entire return output as a mutable list of to do. For our set visibility branch, all we're going to do is call new state dot copy and then we're going to change the visibility to action dot visibility. Then for the remove to do branch, we're just going to call the filter function on our list of to do's. And then we're going to basically check each of our items and make sure that the ID of the item that we're removing is not equal to that item. That way it just basically removes the item of the ID that we want to remove and it keeps the rest of them. We iterate through our entire list. We find the ID that we want to delete. We throw it out and then we keep the rest of them. And then we need to cast this back as a mutable list of to do. 
Now let's implement our subscribe function. So we just called renderer, which is the renderer of to-do model that we're passing into here. And we call the render function that we created. And we're just passing in the transformations map. So we're basically passing back the state and we're mapping our function that we're passing into this onto the state. So we just take the list of data that we have and then we apply a function to it and then we return that data. And we keep doing that over and over and over again as our application runs. All right, guys, so this is a good place to stop for this part of the tutorial. If you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment in the comment box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.